The natural world once provided all of the materials we've ever needed to thrive in a landscape, and there is scarcely a plant or shrub that doesn't have its uses. For our coil basket, the troublesome bramble does an excellent job of binding together what's called the foundation material. And in the British countryside, this can be grasses such as common rush, the majestic coxfoot, and the waterside bulrush. However, some materials can be found growing closer to home and a whole range of suburban grasses, such as ornamental sedges, pampas, and bulbs that grow a leafy plant make for excellent alternatives. In the shed, other natural materials turn up in some unlikely places. You're probably wondering what cooking a casserole has to do with making a basket. And I'm just going to shave some of this meat off here. Okay, down there as well. Oh, that's lovely. That's it. That's a lovely, long, fantastic bone that we've got in here is really what I'm after because this is really quite a nice bit of kit here yeah, let's just stick that down there like that cut that off there okay just rest that on there put this meat here like that. Put that over there. I put this back on the stove. Right, here we go. This is what I've come for. A lovely casserole, yes, and something to eat tonight. 
But one of the main things I wanted to look at here was this bone, because this, for me, is absolutely fundamental to early basket making, especially coil basket making. And if there's one tool that I've really grown to love in the process of making coil baskets, it's my bone needle. And I've got a selection of tools here, and we'll go through your options as a coil basket maker. Um, let's just stick that over there, let's get that out of the way. Okay. And I'll just show you probably what I consider to be my favorite basket making tool. This is a piece of turkey leg, um, which has been cut down. If I just hold this up, you'll see that this is sort of roughly this part of the, uh, the bone. And you can make an incision here along this part of the bone so that you can make this sort of needle, pointed needle shape. Now you probably want to cut this with something like a hacksaw, something with fine teeth in the saw, just to work your way through and then get a knife and finish it off. But that is almost certainly my, my favorite uh, basket making tool. Now, what else have we got? What other options have you got if you can't get your hands on a turkey, or rather a turkey leg? Um, well, this is a, a nice piece here. This has got a piece of copper tube, which again has been cut down. This time you need an angle grinder to do that. And uh, it's my brother actually who hafted this onto um, a, a tool handle here. And, and that's, that's a good piece of kit. And actually my brother's made some lovely baskets with that. Um, I've got one, another one slightly uh, cruder here, again, using the copper. Uh, this has been shaved down much finer. Very, very simple handle here, just rounded off at the end. That's important to have that rounded off because you do use the palm of your hand uh, if, if the material is particularly stiff and you need to really push through. Simple plug in there has secured that. So there's another option. Um, this is a, a mechanical tool. This is used for uh, putting bearings in and scooping uh, ball bearings, that is, uh, grease ball bearings into universal joints and, and other mechanical joints. It's particularly good for working with really coarse and really stiff materials, that one. Um, what else have we got here? Nice little small one uh, made from wood. Um, so it won't be too strong, this, uh, but what's, what's good about it is light. It's very good for much smaller work. So if you wanted to do a small, delicate little basket, something like this is really going to work in your favour. What else have we got in here? Well, for those of us who can't get hold of any of those things, to be, to be honest, a good old-fashioned screwdriver here. So ask a family member if you haven't got one yourself. Ask your grandpa, your grandma. Someone's going to have an old screwdriver they can give you. And what you can do in this case is you can just make the incision in the basket, withdraw the screwdriver, and then push your bramble cane through. Okay, so there are your options when it comes to your needle. But there are some other tools that you're going to need. And um, in particular, you're going to need this sort of funnel or sleeve, as I like to call it, which guides the material that you're coiling up uh, through this end and out here and just regulates the thickness of, the, of that material. Uh, and I've used here uh, a nice piece of um, bone. Uh, this is cow bone, just sawn down quite crudely. And this is probably my go-to piece of kit. Uh, but I've also got some other examples here. This is just hollowed out bits of wood, which are quite good. Use those two together, actually. Um, thread through here and then just get whatever thickness you want to come through this piece of wood. So there's a couple of examples of the kinds of things that you use just to guide the material through the basket. If you're working on a really small basket, perhaps with your, with your small needle, these two pieces of kit, absolutely ideal. But again, this is a material that's actually quite hard to come by. So you do have some modern alternatives and I've got one down here, okay. In many ways, this is just as good, and these are very, very easy to come by. You just want to take a sharp knife and cut all the way around here, okay? And you've got yourself, again, a lovely funnel, okay? So, quite easy to lay your hands on, but I have to say, it's much nicer working with the bone material. And these really are the key things that you're going to need. You're also going to need a sharp knife, and I also, as well, um, always have with me a pair of clippers, for when you need to just cut some of the cane or trim some of the um, the grasses as they're going into the basket. So these are quite useful as well. And there's one other specialist needle that I've made up here. 
Um, this is really good for working inside the basket because every now and again you need to make a stitch right tucked inside the basket and I, I like to use this tool to do so. You can see it's been sort of hollowed out just here so that it can take the cane through the stitch and of course because it's got this bend in it it can work inside the basket as well. And this is made from I think it's spindle wood um, which grows naturally in this shape. So there's some really useful pieces of kit here. I have my favourites. I mean, at the end of the day, as much as I like the copper, what you do find is it gets very, very soft. It actually wears down much quicker than the bone does. And it's this bone needle, if anything, that I rely on most of when it comes to uh, making my baskets, alongside this sleeve here and this needle here. And what I really like about these pieces of kit is that they are so natural. These forms of stitching, these types of tools, get us all the way back thousands and thousands of years into the Neolithic and beyond. From the dawn of basket making, mankind has used uh, needles of different sorts and has used horn as well. Wood, horn and bone, all going towards making your basket. So we'll keep those tools aside. They're the ones that we're gonna use. We'll pack these ones up here, and without further ado, I'll get supper down to the kids. <laughs> 